<laughs> hey, chickadees, I'm Lay Rooster, and you're in the hen house. It's time to get ready for our for the buzz, our weekly news roundup, where we look at the blog and talk about what's going on. And then we talk about how the changes that they're announcing and the information that's coming affects you if you're an early or beginner game player, a mid game player, and of course, on into the late game. So breaking that down, as we do, we're going to be looking at more information on Phyla Vel, the newly released hot character, a member of the Infinity Watch. We've got changes or we've got changes to some of the health steal mechanics in some characters. Some would say nerfs coming out. Um, we've got information on the blitzes, the legendaries that are returning, um, as well as information about the ISO 8 requirements, some new challenges, and all kinds of exciting stuff that you're one are going to be prepared for. So uh, let's get into that. But before we do, go ahead and uh, like the channel, give it a thumbs up, hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time I post a video about this information, about Marvel Strike Force, and other important games that you want to be on the lookout for. Also, make sure you leave us a comment and tell us about the kinds of material that you'd like to see coming out of this channel to help you with your Marvel Strike Force or some of the other games that I support and promote on the channel. And with that, it's time for... The Marvel Strike Force Weekly Buzz... Buzz, 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 buzz. Oh, crap. Who let in all these bees? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop, stop, stop. All right. Welcome back after that brief break. Uh, here we have the blog, uh, the Titan of Infinity Watch. Nice picture of Phyla Vell on there. Some call her Smurfette, uh, grown up uh, and thinned out. Some say she's a frost giant or a troll. Who knows? Probably depends on who you talk to. Um, what I can tell you is she is powerful. She's pretty cool. And uh, she's got some great animations. And just like the rest of that Infinity Watch team, it looks like they're going to be a part of your domination in Marvel Strike Force. So let's check out the blog here. Greetings, Commanders. This week, the awesome energy of the cosmos is on full display as we're showcasing the Infinity Watch's Titan Protector. After meeting this living Quasar, we've got a couple events to help you create a little roster mischief, new challenges, and events to cure what ails your roster. All right, so we move into the Phyla Vell section. Phyla Vell. She is the artificial offspring of Elysius, a Titan Eternal, and Mar Vell. This is the, um, a Kree super soldier of the original Captain Marvel, for those of you who are uh, newer to the comic book history. Um, so anyway, possesses near godlike abilities, super strength, etc. Um, she's helped keep the universe safe from villainous threats by fighting alongside the Guardians of the Galaxy and members of the Infinity Watch. Um, again, she's going to be part of the Infinity Watch team. She may also be uh, able to be kind of slotted in with your Guardians, uh, part of your Guardians too, if you are not able to put together an Infinity Watch team right away. Uh, so keep that in mind, especially beginner and uh, mid-game players, um, since Adam Warlock is uh, going to be a bit difficult to get. But check out some of my other news, blogs, and information about the Infinity Watch releases elsewhere in on YouTube here, and I'll have them linked uh, at the end. For more information, let's see. She has a very high base damage, boosts the damage of her Infinity Watch allies. She's a protector, applies barrier and defense up to her allies, offers additional sustain with drain when they have death proof. So death proof will be an important condition when paired with Moon Dragon, who as sort of is released now for cash right now, essentially cores. Um, uh, her basic ability can't be countered, so that's going to be pretty impressive. And when combined with her Infinity Watch team, domination ensues. All right, so her traits. Let's look at her in detail. Hero, Cosmic, Bio, Protector, and member of the Infinity Watch. So she will be a hero. That'll help, but she's going to be another Cosmic character, and she's going to be Bio this time. So Cosmic and Bio to help help with some of that. All right, this also means uh, just uh, as some kind of things, uh, as a Cosmic hero, she will be able to pair with Silver Surfer for some synergy for him. Since uh, uh, he's going to, you know, he slots in a lot of places. And this is another place where, um, you know, you may be able to pair them up if you're not going for the straight Infinity Watch team. So her basic Meteoric Slash. Attack the primary target for 300% damage and apply a fence down for two turns. Chain to one target within within two spaces of previous target. 
for 300% damage plus apply a fence down. Uh, chain within two spaces sounds like she's going to be able to jump a little bit, uh, which that'll be interesting and make her more effective. If Moon Dragon is an ally, this attack cannot be counterattacked. So it's going to, that's going to be positive. Um, again, if you have Moon Dragon as well, essentially, if you have the whole Infinity Watch team. The special Quantum Cutter. Here we go. Energy cost 5 of 5. Um, clear all negative effects from self and all Infinity Watch allies. So all negatives from everybody on Infinity Watch. Clear two random negative effects from all other allies. So this is the part about where she slots in with other characters and teams. So she'll at least clear two random negative effects from all other allies. And it helps a little. Not nearly as impressive as it is when she's on the Infinity Watch. She'll barrier herself and all allies, so all allies, not just Infinity Watch, so anybody, for 10% of this character's max health. If Adam Warlock is an ally, bury yourself and all Infinity Watch allies for an additional 10% of this character's max health. Better with the Infinity Watch. We kind of know that. We've seen that with the, uh, the team, but she does have some slot ability, so to speak, outside of the team. Attack primary and adjacent targets for 350 damage plus 25 piercing. So... Decent. Barrier and damage uh, dealing, those are always nice when there's a protective uh, protective quality as well as a damage dealing quality, so you don't have to choose between them sometimes. Her ultimate marvelous finish. All right. Energy cost four. Six. Attack primary target for 600% damage plus 25 piercing plus apply offense down. That's going to hit hard and uh, make them not able to hit hard back. Um, apply defense up for two turns plus offense up for two turns to all Infinity Watch allies. Um, so makes them harder to hurt and makes them hurt harder. All right. If primary target has any positive effect, apply two death proof to all Infinity Watch allies. So if the primary target, let's look at this. This is uh, if the primary target has any positive effect apply to death proof to all infinity watch allies that's going to be pretty nice so you're going to want to you're going to target somebody who has a green buff you know in the game and that's going to apply um two not just one but two death proofs um so that's really going to um save your team at that time uh for a couple of hits um that could be very helpful uh, give people time give you know, if Gamora needs any time to get empowered, um, if you got her paired with her, different things like that. All right. Um, her passive, the Avatar of Oblivion, on spawn, apply defense up for two turns to self and all Infinity Watch allies. When this character or any Infinity Watch ally drops below 50% max health, apply two death proof to that character. Okay, so as people start to die, they're going to uh, start to die and take some damage and go down. They're going to get two death proofs again. We're seeing this death proof thing also with the ultimate as well. While this character has death proof. Um, so she'll get that when she drops below 50 as well. When, while this character has death proof, gain 50% drain. 50%. So she's going to be draining, uh, draining health back to herself while she's hitting. While any Infinity Watch ally has death proof, which see up in the, uh, she's going to apply two, um, two to all the Infinity Watch with her ultimate when she targets the right person. Uh, so while any Infinity Watch ally has death proof, that ally gains fifty percent drain as well. Um, remember, we got some, got some people who have some nice regeneration abilities like Gamora and different things, and they're moving uh, like Gamora's when she takes too much damage, she's going to kick it off to somebody, probably Philovel. It sounds like um, these death proofs are going to come in. Drains are going to start kicking in um, as well and apply 50% um, drain to um, other members of the team because she can apply to death proof to all Infinity Watch allies. You're going to have to hit them all at least a couple times at the very least just to clear that and to stop any of this draining ability that's going on. So that's going to be tough on the Infinity Watch in particular. Um, so gain 30% damage. Infinity Watch allies gain 30% damage as well. Lower enemy crit chance by 15% while this character does not have ability block. So that, okay. Lower, so enemies are going to have a harder time critting if she is not ability blocked. Which, um, so, so that means it's, you know, people are going to want to ability block her, uh, particularly so they can do more, uh, have better chances for crit. That also means they're going to want, they're going to have to think about who they're ability blocking, particularly on the Infinity Watch team. Because 
most of these people on the Infinity Watch are pretty awesome. And you may very well be stuck with having to choose which which bad thing you, you're going to allow to have a chance to happen because you can't ability block all of the folks. Um, so that's a piece that she looks like she's going to be awesome. I really, I've got her, I've unlocked her. She already looks pretty darn cool. And the animations and, and stuff are really great. So I hope you enjoy her as well. So the vote for Loki and campaign mischief, changing gears here. One of your first chances to recruit Philavel. So this will be the campaign campaign event to recruit Philavel will be on June 9th, coming up during her event campaign, Vote for Loki. Join Philavel and her team as they attempt to stop a dimension-hopping President Loki from taking over Strike and Nexus Earth. To join the mission, you'll need to assemble an elite team of characters with a limited-time Quantum Guard trait. For the list of characters using this trait, filter your roster using Quantum Guards. Um, and I wanted to bring that up and just show that while we're in so that we can look at that. So let's get the roster. Um, and show, especially for new players who aren't used to doing this, let's go through the sort and scroll down to where we find Quantum Guard. Here it is. And let's just take a look, uh, or a gander, as we say, in the south, um, uh, at what kind of characters we got. So we see Black Bolt, Hela, Kestrel coming up. Um, hard for me. I will most likely be using those three characters in this. Um, let me see Polaris uh, that people may have, Rocket. Um, you know, Shatterstar, popular. Uh, Yo-Yo be a nice protector in that group um, for me. Um, just looking at different characters that might be uh, might be helpful. Uh, you know, a lot of these characters could be um, Doctor Strange again, since he has since he has the resurrection ability. If you can keep him alive in the campaign and you lose somebody that's not him, he might be able to resurrect them, which will help you progress and farm that node. Uh, let's see, Captain Marvel, who's kind of a good standby. You know, um, for getting through some stuff. Um, as well, Mantis, who's a who's a pretty decent healer, um, and may be able to help. So, and and again, you should you know you'll have her more likely earlier on. So there's characters in here that um, I'm seeing. You know, Philovel is available, which you know um, I'll probably ch try her out there um, in honor of that. Mordo can give you some some control there. Colleen Wing coming in for her special abilities and everything. Um, and you know we see some you know some older characters. Uh, we see Moon Knight and Moon Dragon down there at the bottom. Uh, of my roster, that is. Uh, but, you know, people like Hand Sentry and uh, Scarlet Witch, who you may have. America Chavez, since we just had a Blitz, some people may have um, as well. Um, so there's some different characters in here that you may very well have, even at lower levels. And so that might help you. Um, but of course, there's it should be uh, good enough characters. We'll be, uh, we'll be unlocking and narrating the, um, the campaign event uh, with as much goofiness as possible, like we always do. So check out that videos and catch us on Twitch when we do that. Anyway, let's go back to the blog here. So running parallel with Vote for Loki will be the Campaign Mischief event, which rewards your event campaign participation with a chance to acquire Loki's new President Loki costume. Uh, if, we, if we pull in and get Loki um, for that, um, I don't know if you've seen that. He's a member of the Asgardian, so I'll just find him quickly that way and bring that up um, because let's look at that. Here is the President Loki costume. Uh, looks a little bit more like Tom Hiddleston, for sure, um, which people are going to like. And, of course, we've got the Loki show that's uh, coming on with Disney Plus and all that. I don't know. That uh, That is not bad. Uh, you know, the, the costumes have been hit or miss so far. Um, but that one's not bad. If I can get it for free, I'll get it. Uh, let's see. Um, all right. So we're going to be able to get a costume. We're seeing a lot of these costume events and things coming around with that. So, you know, we'll see. If you like the costume, then it's more. If not, you're going to be able to get stockpiles some of those credits. Um, some, not all. Um, spend your Vote for Loki energy to earn points towards the daily campaign mischief milestone, which rewards ISO 8 resources. This will be important because ISO 8 is becoming more and more, I don't want to say important, I want to say required um, for good characters to do some of the events and different things. And we'll see uh, down below in the blog about what's going on. I have just a second. I've got a Star Trek notification because uh, check out my Star Trek videos and content as well. I have to make sure we don't get killed or anything, you know, live long and prosper, all that stuff. Anyway, uh, getting back here, 
your vote for Loki Energy is going to give us some of those required ISO 8 resources. Purple and orange Mystic Gear, sure. Catalyst parts, yellow flash bits. It's every, I guess every event, every costume event is having flash bits, and then they're all got different colors. So soon we'll start seeing periwinkle, different things. We're gonna have to learn our colors if we don't know the um, them as they just multiply here. Use your yellow flash bits to purchase the limited time President Loki costume. Grab this godly garb before July first as unused. Um, Unused yellow flash bits will be converted to costume credits at a conversion rate of 60%. So this is a standard thing now. You earn the flash bits, and then if you don't spend them because you didn't like the costume or you forgot, they will convert at a, you know, and you'll retain 60% of them as the generic costume credits. So we'll see, you know, as we get more costumes, we'll see what how we can buy things with with those or what we can how we can use them exactly. Um, I think a little bit of time will start to show us, you know, how this is happening or what kinds of releases. Uh, what the release cadence is um, on costumes. If you care about costumes, you know, uh, right now they have no effect except uh, looking, uh, you know, costume, uh, you know, fashion, etc. So, um, you know, I like the I like the option in the game, um, but you know, you may not you may not like the costumes, and you definitely may not like them if they cost money. So, this one's free if you can earn it. Now, tier one ISO eight updates. Uh, so, we're starting to see this. I mentioned this a second ago. To help prepare your roster for the exciting introduction of Tier 2 ISO Blues, which those are coming, and uh, that's going to be important as well, because as they require us to have more ISO 8 green, the Tier 1 um, stuff, they're also, we can expect that they're going to be requiring us to have some ISO 8 blue at some point for certain tasks, for certain unlocks, or different things. So we don't, you don't want to be sleeping on ISO 8s. Um, I don't think they're going to let us. Um, so we've got several updates, uh, upcoming opportunities to earn tons of ISO 8 green. Don't miss these chances to go green in the coming weeks. So the campaign mischief, they just talked about that. Uh, reward ISO 8 resources, including T1 ion orb fragments. That's very good. Okay, because that's the um, that's the currency for um, for leveling up, fusing fusing the crystals, leveling up the different the different tiers of the ISO 8s. Um, that will be important, and you really don't want to be running out of that. And it's You've got to farm a lot to actually keep keep that number up. Basic and premium um, ISO ISO eight orb fragments, T one ISO eight crystals. Players who collect all okay, players who collect all of their free energy and refill their energy four times a day will be able to earn sixty controller ISO eight crystals for each attribute, as well as other milestone rewards. So just. Just so that so that's on your ISO eight campaign node. You're gonna you know you're gonna need to spend all your energy. So when it caps out like at 120, it caps out for me. You're gonna need to make sure that you're um you're not you're you're spending it the moment you hit that cap so that you can spend all of it. Um the 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 um whenever it does that. So always keep it below max um, will be important. And then you're gonna have to refill your energy four times a day to max this out. Um, they're saying so that's the um. That is the 50 core refreshes that you can do four times um, a day, and then it goes up um, to 100, 100 cores. So th that'll be a 200 core a day requirement if you want to stay on this and get this stuff for the controller, for the controller um, ISO 8 crystals. So if that matters to you, you need to make sure you're setting aside or saving uh, and trying to earn some of those cores, um, unless you're planning to spend on that. Um, a lot of people use their cores to refresh, refresh campaign energy, which is um, always a good, really, it's a good strategy for play. Um, but I don't know a lot of people who use their cores to refresh ISO 8 campaign energy. So, and that's something they're going to want us to be doing in here. It sounds like they're trying to entice us to do that um, and letting us know. So you're going to have to see um, if what the core cost is for you and if you're willing to embrace that. T1 ISO 8 calendar kicking off on June 25th local time log in every day for seven days to earn T1 ion orb fragments basic T1 ISO 8 orb fragments and premium ISO 8 orb fragments these are better ones we don't get them very often um, players who log in all seven days will earn 40 basic T1 ISO 8 orbs 10 premium ISO 8 orbs and 10 T1 ion orbs again the ions are your currency that's rather important as well extra T1 ISO 8 orbs going live with the next version 5.5 release 
in about six weeks will be the addition of basic T1 ISO 8 or fragments to the Isotope 8 campaign nodes. So farming those campaign nodes will give you more orb fragments, which will help you get more of those crystals um, in order in order to keep fusing them and, and leveling them up since we've got to get a lot more people up uh, in the ISO 8s, and we'll see more about that below in the blog. So they say, they say the team will continue to look at additional ways to make T1 ISO 8 resources more available in the future. I was just leveling up some of my characters on Infinity Watch, actually, and uh, just ran out of ions. So I'm going to have to keep farming that, and I farm that every day. So um, we're going to need uh, plenty of things um, as we start to expand our use of ISOs. Origin challenges. Earn more gear for each of the origin traits with the upcoming origin gear challenges. So using characters equipped with ISO 8, assemble teams for each of the five origin traits and send them into battle to earn tons of purple and orange origin gear. Here are the new challenges and the requirements. So we'll get the origin gear, which is which is good because we always need that for the for the five different traits or origins. So this is for the um, bio, the original biofuel will require five bio characters. Mutagens, which is for the mutants, will require five mutant characters. All right. Alchemy is going to be your mystic, and that's going to require five mystic characters. Expertise is skill. That's going to require five skill characters. You get the point, right? Industry is tech, so you require five tech characters. So you're going to need five, five characters of that same origin to then get those. Um, each challenge appears twice a week once per weekday with all active on Saturdays. Okay, so Saturdays instead of our Sundays when we see everything else. So that uh, that's a little better for the grind on those challenges on Sundays. So it'll make Saturday a little grindier um, and requires the following ISO 8 on character. So this is where it gets, again, this is, they've been rolling this out every week, it seems. Each challenge appears you know, twice, and here is difficulty one, tier one, level three or higher. So to do the challenge, you're going to have to have a level three. It, level three is not hard. However, you need more and more of these level threes and ions to fund them and crystals. So level level while well, level three itself is not hard, that tends to be uh, where I bring people in the very beginning. And then I start evaluating how they're doing and if I want to invest more because it starts getting more and more costly at that point. Um, we're going to have to have that to go in. And then level two is going to go to four, level four, which is where it starts becoming costly, in my opinion. Um, and then, but difficulty three, to complete, um, you're going to need level five ISOs. And we already know we need level five ISOs to get to the blue ISOs, which are above. That's essentially level six and beyond on the ISOs. So you can't bring someone to, to blue ISO without maxing out green ISO. So think of it as level six. Um, but level five... Is not. I think I've now got maybe a handful of characters at ISO level five, and I've only recently started doing that because of the requirements that we're hearing about requiring ISO level five on characters to unlock, like Adam Warlock. So my X factor is going up to ISO five, that sort of thing. Um, now, if you look at this, you're going to have five different five different challenges for the origin gears, um, and it's going to require. So that's five bio, five mutant, mystic, five skill, five tech. That's 25 characters. Those 25 characters in order to complete the max level tier of these challenges will need to be at ISO level five. Like I just said, um, I've, I'm, I'm working on beating DD3 for the second time. I have four or five characters at ISO level five. Um, I don't know where you are. Leave a comment down below. Let me know where you are. You may have already spent some stuff and built up your ISOs, but this is going to, you know, you're going to need to pick the five bio characters that go in here, the five mutants, the mystic, the five skills, the five techs, those 25 characters. Those are not, they might be some of the characters that you're already bringing up in order to use in like DD3 or DD4 um, or to use to unlock perhaps like the X Factor characters that you know you're going to have to use to like unlock Adam Warlock. But it's possible that um, you may have to go beyond that. Uh, the five characters that you pick for each type may not synergize well for like the event or something. So you may be looking to have more than 25 characters at ISO level five. That is going to be a grind. It's going to take some time. Uh, take some time, take a lot of resources. They say they're going to be putting a more infusion of that, but we're going to have to see. I'm curious about your thoughts about that down below in the comments. All right. 
returning legendary event. Your next chance to pack the explosive ability of Jubilee into your roster. Whoa, Jubilee. On the way with the return of her legendary event like Totally Jubilee. For a chance of recruiting the Astonishing X-Men's Firecracker Controller, you'll need the small but mighty Pimtech team at five stars, which includes Ant-Man, Wasp, Stature, Yellow Jacket, and Ghost. And as a reminder, Jubilee's legendary event is more difficult than previous legendary events. Okay. So let's just talk about this a little bit. Everybody's been waiting on Jubilee. We hadn't heard when she's coming out a second time. Um, you know, if you if you listen to the talk, um, people, it sounds like no one has Jubilee. I know people do have Jubilee, but I know that a lot of people did miss her. And they've been waiting and waiting and waiting for the announcement and going, when is she coming? People thought she was coming in May. People thought she was coming in the beginning of June. She's now coming. Um, She's coming a little later. So um, they did say that she would come before Adam Warlock is release. So this means we're at least one more step closer to the Adam Warlock release uh, because you have to have Jubilee in, in addition to those X factors and at ISO level five, as well as gear tier high on up <laughs> um, in order to get the high stars on that. Uh, check out some of my previous videos about these blogs in order to get a lot of the breakdown of the details there. Um, so you need the Pimtech, which we talked about once this announcement for Adam Warlock came out. Pimtech is required for Jubilee. Jubilee is required for um, Adam Warlock, as is X Factor. Um, so Pimtech Ant Man is now directly connected to Adam Warlock, um, which is you know eh, I, I don't want to build him up that much, but you know uh, you may you you may have a different opinion, but. Um, but you do have to if you want to get Jubilee. And Jubilee is worth it as, um, you know, kind of the linchpin on that Axeman, Astonishing X-Men team for raids. Best raid team out there right now. You definitely want to get, get them if you can. You will enjoy them every day all over the place in raids and elsewhere. Um, so uh, I highlighted this point because they said, as a reminder, Jubilee's legendary event is more difficult than previous legendary events. They announced this when Jubilee was first released. Um, I was lucky enough to unlock Jubilee in that moment um, on there. My Pimtech team was, um, was not very built up. They've been built up some, particularly Ghost, because she's really the good character that you do want. I brought her into DD3, spent the resources, and really leveled her up, and I have no regrets about that. Um, but I didn't when I was doing the unlock. And it was a very tough battle for my team. I think uh, it really, uh, you know, I've talked about this on Twitch and with some of the folks um, on Twitch and chat and everything. As the battle went, it came down to my ghost, who was my strongest character then as well, um, was about to die, had a sliver of health. And so did the last person standing in the campaign. And it came down to who hits the next one first. My ghost did, killed the other one. And so I unlocked Jubilee. So I feel like I was really at the bottom of being able to unlock Jubilee because it was down to about one one turn and who went, you know, kind of a coin flip of who goes first type of thing. So um, it was harder than usual. So I expect that I'm going to have to keep putting uh, keep putting some resources into the rest of the Pemtech team to make them do that. You may find that similar. So um, you you may want to make sure if you're not if you're not willing to raise them up beforehand, you may want to make sure that you have some resources on hand to raise them up if you're starting to have a wall with being successful in the unlock event, because people have been waiting and you probably don't want to miss that. So stockpile a bit, set aside a bit of Pimtech allowance at the very least. So mission five is um, gear tier is level 60, gear tier 11. These are recommendations. Okay, I was like, wait a minute, did they sneak us requirements in for a second? But no, these are just the recommendations. Level 60, gear tier 11, ability 6664, four, okay. Uh, the recommendations are relatively meaningless. So it's whatever you can win with. Um, I don't think I don't think I actually had this when I unlocked her five, which is probably why it was so so close. Um, but uh, these at least give you a guide. That way, if you feel like, well, you have an idea of what they're saying you might need. But the the proof will really be in the pudding of do I win or not? Um, and because if you don't, you're going to need to boost up. Um, and so let's see. Jubilee is also one of the required characters for the upcoming Adam Warlock legendary event. So if you're looking to recruit the Infinity Watch's legendary leader, you don't want to miss out on like totally Jubilee. Um, definitely, you know, as we've seen, even when we look at Gamora and Nebula, who we definitely didn't. I know I didn't think I'd be talking about on any blog um, or anywhere except how useless they are. Um, 
you know, Gamora is wrecking nerds all over the place. She is wonderful to play with just by herself and is really fun right now. Uh, Nebula, I've got to build her up because I've had her in a basement locked away um, for a long, long time in shame because she was so useless. Um, so, but now she's going to have uses. And as we, you know, as I get her up and can kind of try them out, trying them out on Twitch and some of the, some of the stuff and just seeing what, you know, what they can do. So even those people are good, you know, are doing their own bits. Filovel is, is rocking. Moon Dragon, we already seen some of the stuff with her release. Looks wonderful. It is coming out great. Um, and Adam Warlock, we saw, I mean, each of these each of these characters that's coming out on the Infinity Watch is is pretty darn great and has some ability to stand alone. And then when they put them together on the team, it's just like Black Order who, um, you know, and that's what it looks like. So, um, you know, put some effort into um, being ready to unlock Adam Warlock as well as uh, making sure you get a good Axeman team because you're going to want that even if for some reason you don't care about the Infinity Watch um, because, um, you know, Axemen are great. All right, let's look at the blitzes here. Cleanse the battlefield of enemy impurities with a symbiote and a cyborg with this week's blitzes. On June 7th, inject anti-venom character shards into your roster with lethal, lethal dose blitz. Okay, the June 7th blitz. So that's coming on Monday. All right, so um, it's anti-venom. He's been really hard to get. I mean, now he's in the premium orbs, um, which makes him a little e a little easier, but not, not great. He's a premium orb exclusive um for the most part well the new way of putting them in there like call is in there but um so we'll have a blitz expect this blitz to be hotly contested because everyone's been saying when are we getting any venom and all that stuff and you know um and i doubt too many people have gotten too many shards from those premium orb drops uh so um i every pretty much everyone in in unless they bought all the whale offers that are possible is is going to want to get some shards here so expect this you're going to need to set your timers on your blitzes for him um and then starting up on the thursday june 10th is the second run of the bionic detective blitz arm yourself with misty knight character shards by pounding enemies teams into a pulp so again misty knight for her second blitz release colleen and misty kind of doing some alternating jumps here with two blitz releases so that Heroes for Hire team is pretty darn interesting on war defense. Um, pretty neat. They actually, um, they do pretty well for me in Blitz um, as well. So um, uh, at least they have a slight other use um, as well. Um, but so, and she's pretty darn important to that team. Um, so you're going to want her. Most people are going to want them. They are part. It looks like, you know, we're probably going to see like the Infinity Watch come in and be able to counter them better than some of the other teams um, do. Um, but, uh, it's nice to stick them on war defense. It's nice to have a place for the, um, the majority of the defenders to kind of go and have some, some use again. Uh, cause a lot of people have them if they've been playing the game long enough and it was hard to find places for them to fit in and belong. So anyway, bonus and flash events, start preparing for Magneto's asteroid M on June 5th. All right, which is uh, June 5th with the Gifted Gathering event. Activate your roster's mutant gene by earning double character shard rewards for Brotherhood and X-Men characters. Great. Filter your roster using the trait Brotherhood or X-Men to find all eligible characters and their corresponding nodes. So those are the Brotherhood and the X-Men. So, um, uh, and again, that's going to be an important thing. You know, Magneto, Magneto is, um, he's really an early legendary. So when we talk to beginner, early and mid game players, he's, he's a good one to try to get in that early opening rotation. So you need to get your Brotherhood characters and or your X-Men. Um, you know, uh, to give him one little shout out, you get Wolverine for free um, through your dailies. And so he counts as an X-Men, so he can help you. Um, he's at least sort of a freebie character that can help you with unlocking Magneto. That's probably the only, uh, most of the only time that he gets used, except perhaps on, you know, an X-Men team where he's not making the difference. Um, that sort of thing. So he'll be there, but you do want, you know, the Brotherhood and the Brotherhood 2.0 are good teams. They're useful in war. They're useful in blitz. Um, you know, they have some, some meaning. Magneto is actually quite good. Um, and particularly for the early and uh, early mid game players, you know, he has use in arena. Um, later on, he's, he, you know, he's, he's out of the meta and all that, but um, he can be leveraged um, and be uh, tough to face when you're in the earlier earlier stages so that can help you with your with your fights so don't don't sleep on magneto um, and get that brotherhood team together um, 
Back for your monthly shot at Bagging Bullion is the payday event where you can send your mercenaries out on a mission to bring back gold. Support your soldiers of fortune with the Merc Mayhem event, which rewards two times shard payouts and campaign notes for mercenaries. Right, so this is one we get a lot of gold from this event. You unlock it. You have to have a ultimately seven star, a f- team of five, seven yellow star mercenaries. Taskmaster being, you know, the glue that really makes them extra good. Um, but it does include some people. Um, you know, Killmonger, we've talked about again, is on there. And he's one that slots into a few different teams for a few different events and things. So it's good to focus on him where you can, as well as like, you know, Deadpool as a member of the X-Force. Um, and then, you know, Merc Lieutenant. Merc Riot Guard, that sort of thing. They're um, they're they're good. Uh, the mercenary team can be used in some war defense, um, at least to to be to make people have to have to work at it or use a specific counter. Um, but anyway, so it's good when these events come in. Just like with uh, the Magneto event, you can get your Brotherhood and X Men characters more. This is a good time to spend your campaign energy to farm them. Same thing with farming the different mercenaries that where you have the nodes active so that you can get them for the ones that are on nodes. All right, so look look for that. Everybody's happy when the mercenary payday payday event comes because we get a bunch of gold and we usually are broke by the time we get to it. So changes to health steal. All right, this is kind of the nerf section, although it's more of a future nerf. The health steal mechanic for existing characters has always ignored death proof on enemy characters and caused them to ignore triggered abilities when dropping below a certain health threshold. Um, okay, we just saw. In Philovel up above, that you know, um, there's a triggering event when she she drops below fifty percent, and it fires off those death proofs and things like that. So death proofs and dropping below fifty percent, something that's going in with Philovel and Infinity Watch. And look, they are having some changes to that kind of mechanics. So this will continue to be true for the current characters with health steal, meaning it's changing, and they're not rolling it back on the existing characters. Those characters, um, which they talk about, you know, have been really important, like Minerva, who is who you hear about and you should be working on because of all the greatness related to this. So, however, considering how powerful health steal is, future characters with the mechanic will not have the ability to ignore death proof or triggered health threshold abilities. Here are the details, meaning we've realized that we don't want to keep releasing characters with this. We're going to change it so that um, those characters are their stock is going to continue to be pretty good. And these other characters with some kind of health steal, it's going to be different. Um, All right. So future characters, changing the health steal mechanic for future characters so it doesn't ignore death proof on enemy characters and will trigger health threshold passive abilities. All right. So going forward, that's what's going to happen with that steal. Current characters, updated the health steal ability text for current characters with the following new text. This attack ignores death proof and passives that trigger when a character drops below a certain health. So they're going to say, we're going to like put it in there so that you're not yelling at us about the other ones. It's We are changing it for the future. The characters that have received the updated ability text, which means the characters that have what's going to be the good old legacy health steal, are Minerva, Dark Phoenix's ability, Ebony Maw's ability, Yellow Jacket, and Ghost. Um, so... For the moment, barring Yellow Jacket, who is still a decent character, everyone else is really, you know, um, top tier and useful in higher end stuff, late game stuff, because of these damaging drain uh, health steal abilities and all that. So um, there's a list of characters that are going to be helpful for some things as you as you go forward. Um, and what whatever we see in the future is going to be less. Um, the two main reasons for these actions. The way that health steal currently works doesn't fit with where the team wants to utilize the mechanic in the future or how we want it to interact with other future characters that grant death proof or have triggered health threshold abilities. Meaning we got lots of plans. These characters are a problem. We want these char- the new characters we're releasing to be good and to not be nerfed by a lot of old, old characters or other characters. The dev team looks to reduce the effectiveness of older characters only in the most critical situations and believes that leaving the functionality of health still is fine for them. They're saying, we don't want to nerf these characters that you love and have put a lot of resources in um, unless it was extremely important and we feel like it's not so important and we can leave them be. Also, they probably know that if you nerf those, those characters, people are already pissed off. They're going to be really pissed. And um, and things ain't going to be good. So 
Anyway, I'm glad they at least had that insight. The team strives for consistency to ensure that mechanics are visible and easily understandable. There are a few instances in which some abilities work slightly differently, such as how some chain attacks can be interrupted and some cannot. As always, we're open to hearing your feedback on the changes. Until next time, good luck, Commanders. All right. So that's our blog review for this week. Uh, I post these every week um, as we kind of dissect the blog and try to look at what uh, what impact this is going to have on the new and early game players as well as mid game players, um, you know, uh, so that you can figure some of that stuff out. Some things don't seem to apply always and or what you need to do when you're earlier on in the game is a little bit different. Anyway, we're looking at those. If you have questions, please drop them below in the comments. Please let me know about things you want to hear about, the content you're looking for related to Marvel Strike Force and other games. Um, as well as remember, um, if you found this helpful at all and want to help me out, give a like on this. Give a subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. We're trying to grow and boost our subscribers. Um, also, hit that notification bell so you're notified of the next videos that I post. I post several a week on Marvel Strike Force, Star Trek Fleet Command, as well as some Harry Potter Wizards Unite stuff. So uh, we branch out a little bit, trying to be helpful and goofy in mini games. Um, anyway, do that. Also, you'll see the links over here um, for my Twitch. Uh, I'm streaming nightly uh, Pacific time after work in the evenings, starting around between 6 and 8 p.m. It varies by the day. Check my schedule, as well as um, each day on the weekends in the early in the morning and brunch time in and then afternoon and evening stuff as well because weekends are freer for me. So um, we have a lot of fun out there hanging out. Please come in, bring your questions. And if you're coming over to Twitch and catching me from uh, YouTube, please let me know that you're coming from YouTube because I want to give you a special shout out and a special welcome as you do that. So <laughs> thanks and take care and cock-a-doodle-doo.